Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are back. With a look at the Hot Toys DX13 Battle Damage T800 Terminator from Terminator 2. And I've said this many times before, both on Facebook and here on the channel. This has been my greatest anticipated figure of 2013. Terminator 2 is my absolute favorite movie of all time. And I pre-ordered this thing back in January with a supposed release of June. Obviously that has flown by and I ended up getting this guy the week after Thanksgiving. So the real question now is, was it worth all the weight and all the anticipation that has surrounded this figure? And let's just dive right in and take a closer look at him. Now Hot Toys is always good to us when it comes to accessories, you always get a ton. But this being a DX figure, it of course goes that extra step further. So starting off here we have the DX display stand. This is very common, we've gotten this with some of the Batman figures they've done and a lot of other DX. The square base. Here we have the floor kind of great texture that you had in the steel mill with some kind of rust paint on there. From the top in this harsh lighting it actually looks kind of bad, but in real life, in normal lighting, it looks fine. It looks like a good rust pattern on there. It just, this harsh light, you can just see the V's and the little marks on here, and it really just kind of is overdone in this light. Up here on the front, you have the chrome little nameplate with Terminator 2 T800 DX. Very cool. And this is a different stand than we got with the DX10. The previous release, not Battle Damage DX Terminator, is completely different. He had like the Tron base. Here we have the adjustable cradle comes up, a little loop up here that goes in between the figure's legs. This, of course, is adjustable, even though it's very, very stiff, and I'm not going to mess with it here, but this will slide up and down. Then here on the back, we have a light switch. You flip that, and we have posable spotlights. Unfortunately, this light stopped working for me. That's definitely a bummer. I'm going to be contacting Sideshow about that and see what they'll do for me. One of the reasons I always buy Hot Toys through Sideshow when I do get them is because they are the authorized dealer in America for them and they're the ones that can actually replace parts easily and all that stuff. So hopefully customer service treats me right with them. I'll definitely post about what happens on Facebook, let you guys know if you're curious how that goes down, but a little disappointing that my light doesn't work. It's an LED, so LEDs don't burn out, so it must be a wiring issue or something. It was on a little bit before, and then I've had it come on and off since it stopped working, but very odd. But still, a decent little display stand, pretty cool. By the way, this takes three AAA batteries that do not come with the figure, you have to go buy them yourself. The most boring accessory that comes with any hot toy are the wrist pegs, the extra wrist pegs. Definitely good to have in case you break them. They do feel like one of the most fragile pieces on any hot toy figure. Mildly, mildly, not even worth complaining about. Disappointed that one of them isn't a chrome, just because the one arm is supposed to be the exposed endoskeleton. It would have been kind of funny if it was a chrome, but obviously that's expense that doesn't need to be made. And while we're looking at boring accessories, we get this little drumstick, and I'll get into what this is used for a little later. As you would expect with Hot Toys, he comes with plenty of hands. We have the two fisted hands. You can see the unique battle damage on each. You can see the endoskeleton underneath it, the blood, all the rips and holes in the glove. And the gloves look nice and leathery themselves. Very cool detail here. So just two plain fists, one for each side. Two more relaxed or more grasping hands here, very nicely detailed. Then of course the hands that will probably be on the figure most, the dual trigger fingers here. Obviously very, very important with the Terminator figure is the trigger hands. Love the detail, love the little endoskeleton poking out the tip of the finger there. Very, very cool. And then we have two more right hands to go along with them. Here we have another fist. This one has a small hole in it to hold one of his other accessories we'll get to in a second. And of course, from the very end of the movie, we get the thumbs up as the Terminator is lowered into the liquid steel for his final moment. Something that's not completely necessary with this set because I don't see anyone recreating that scene with this figure. It's kind of just the arm coming up out of the molten steel, but still very cool that we got it. To go along with that other fisted hand, here's the accessory it comes with, the steel pipe that he's impaled with by the T-1000, and then later comes back and cuts T-1000 in half with. Pretty cool, it is accurate to the film, it has the tapered edges that kind of come to a point, it's kind of a squared off tube, it's not a round tube, so very cool, he holds it well in that hand, very tight, no blood detail on here or anything, which is fine, very simple accessory, but it works. 
And here we have the handgun that the Terminator uses, I guess, throughout the movie. Looking it up on Internet Movie Firearms Database, it appears that this is the one he gets in the biker bar and then carries with him all the way up to when he shatters the T-1000. Very beautifully done. It almost looks like it is metal. It's very shiny plastic, but it is scuffed up enough to look like there's been some damage to it. Very cool looking. The silver is very silver. The black's a nice gloss. Everything on here is just amazing looking. You can see the barrel there. Very, very cool. Now, of course, being a DX figure, there's even more here than you could see. The pistol will actually cock back. And if you look inside, you could see a bullet in the chamber. But that goes a step further because the clip is removable. And you can see, maybe you can't with my lighting, but it actually is that bullet here at the top of the clip. So it's its own separate piece that could be loaded into the gun. Also, the little hammer here on the back is movable, so you could put it up. You could cock it and it puts it back. Very, very cool detail on such a small accessory. Just amazing. Next up we have his assault rifle, the famous one that he jumps from the pickup truck onto the semi truck carrying the liquid nitrogen with and shoots T-1000 point blank in the face. Once again, some more great detail. It's mostly a black plastic, but there's some bits of this almost kind of greenish dry brushing done to it that really highlights certain areas on the gun. Especially up here at the muzzle, it just kind of gives it a look of wear and use. It's very, very cool. It has a cloth strap that has little adjusters on it so you could shorten it if you wanted to. I'm not going to mess with it, but very nice looking. Here in the side, you can actually see all the writing is here on the gun. The safety, the semi and auto switch, the little writing for the thing itself. No writing on this side, but there is a little port here that will flap open. And I don't know what that's supposed to do. I really have no clue. I'm not a gun guy. I have no clue what that actually is, what that does. And there seems to be no moving piece inside. The clip doesn't appear to be removable. So I really don't know what the purpose of that is, but it opens. So if you want to open it, you can. My one gripe about this gun, and maybe this is something that's true to the actual thing, if not, I'll probably contact Sideshow about it when I do the base, is the rear stock on it, you can see is twisted on mine. It's tilted off to the side, and maybe that's something that's real, just to help carry the gun or something, I don't know, but it may be a defect to my piece, so if anybody knows, please comment below. I'm curious to know if that's supposed to be there or not. Next up, we have the Terminator's Bandolier with all the grenade rounds in it. Very nicely detailed. See, it has the real metal clasps on it. I believe these are real metal. And all kinds of bullet holes and battle damage to it. And then each one of these grenades is actually removable and detailed on their own, which is really impressive. Now, where this figure would actually be in the movie with all the battle damage on him, he wouldn't have any of these. He's down to just the one in his gun. I believe he rips his knee open falling off of the semi-truck. And at that point, he has no more grenades except the one in the grenade launcher. So not necessarily sounding movie accurate for the figure, but kind of cool for just posing him, doing whatever. And besides that knee, he's close enough to how he is at the end of the Cyberdyne thing that it could actually work, maybe for the highway chase or something. And I may be wrong about the knee. I haven't looked closely enough to see exactly where that damage happens. It's a little hard to tell with all the movement and kinetic things going on in the film, but very nicely detailed. And then of course we get the grenade launcher itself. They gave a similar accessory with the DX-10, except this one has the damaged stock at the end, which is actually my one gripe with this weapon. The wood detailing on it just doesn't seem up to par. The paint on it's a little just lacking. It looks very plasticky to me. And even back here, it has the effect of torn up wood, but it still just looks plasticky. It doesn't come off as being real in my eye. And it's a minor nitpick, and I've looked at the actual thing used in the movies, and it looks a lot like this, but there's just something on here that just kind of feels artificial to me that just doesn't scream as real as the rest of the detail on the rest of the figure. And it's a bummer, but it's there. The strap on here is just like the other gun, kind of a nylon-y thing, has little adjusters. See down here, it actually has the bolted on piece where it attaches to the gun, which is very cool. There's some distress on the barrel of the gun, some little silver dry brushing to bring out the wear and tear on it. You can see down the barrel of it. The sight, you can move up. I don't think he ever does this in the film, but it's an option. And then the coolest thing here is you can actually flip this little latch and 
open up the gun. So you'd have him reloading the grenade launcher. And there is one last little shell in there. So completely separate, you could fill the bandolier and still have this in the grenade launcher. It's a complete separate piece, its own little piece. Once again, kind of unnecessary to give us that extra one. I'm sure it would have been fine without it, but hey, why not? Pretty cool. We also get a little microfiber cloth, which is gonna be very useful for the accessory so large, I don't even know if you could call it an accessory anymore. We get the liquid metal T-1000 piece. And this is basically a lightweight, hollow statue of the T-1000 and very, very cool. He's super chrome, super shiny, hence the need for the cloth. And probably still you'll end up seeing my fingerprints all over this guy. But he's set up to recreate the scene late in the movie where Arnold punches the T-1000 in the head and the head morphs into hands and gets a grip on Arnold's fist, which is pretty neat. The head is articulated on a ball joint, the only piece of articulation here, and I'm very, very cautious of it because it feels like it's a place where you could really chip the chrome paint and get some paint rub around the neck, so something I don't think you want to mess with too much. Down here at the bottom of him, you can see he's kind of pooling into the liquid chrome. You can see my fingerprints all over it because there's no way to touch this without leaving them everywhere. The bottom kind of has a nice velvety base to it to kind of keep it from scuffing a shelf, which is cool. It's a quick view from the back. Pretty good detail. It's a very non-defined version of the T-1000. Very just pure liquid metal. But wait, there's more because this is the Sideshow exclusive version of this figure. And both the Sideshow exclusive and I know the Asian exclusive was the same thing. I don't know if there was another exclusive set out there. But you get another head sculpt for this. So now you can replace the ill-defined amorphous chrome head with a very, very beautifully done Robert Patrick likeness. And... And this just screams Robert Patrick for being a monochromatic head. It's amazingly detailed. Everything you'd expect with a hot toy. Just amazing. It captured his eyes and the ears. I mean, some of the biggest trademarks of the character. Just really, really well done. Beautifully sculpted. Pure hot toys quality there. Nothing skimped out on. My only disappointment with it is the fact that, well... To me, this just doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the look of this. It's a very amorphous chrome blob, and I actually think the less detailed head fits this better. It makes more sense in the context of the piece. And while this Robert Patrick head is amazing, and I'm so glad I got the exclusive version so that I have it, I just really don't know if I'm going to display it with this. I've seen people put it on the old Hot Toys T-1000, and the head swap really doesn't look that good in my opinion just because it's a chrome head and a flesh-colored neck, so it just doesn't mesh. But amazing head, I just don't know if I'm going to use it that much. And the way this gimmick works is you will take your T-800 figure and remove the hand that you want to go through here. So I removed his left hand and then you will slide it through the hole that in the T-1000's hand and then on the other side you will reattach the hand. And there you have your setup of the T-1000 grabbing the T-800. Pretty cool and I assume you could do this with whatever hot toy you wanted so if I wanted to have the red skull trying to punch out the T-1000 I probably could set that up now. Don't know why I want to, but I could. So let's get into the figure itself. We have the T-800's biker boots, which are really well detailed. You could roll up the pants a little bit and see all the buckles and everything on them. A nice leather look across the strap here in the front. Very nicely detailed, very nicely done. Here on the pant leg, we have the little zipper for the cuff there. I don't believe the zipper actually functions. I don't want to push it and try to find out, but it has a little pull that you could actually kind of move around, which is neat. Here on the left leg, we have the battle damage. We have the endoskeleton being seen through the leg here. But some nice shredding in the pant leg and just amazing bloody detail there in the endoskeleton leg. And if you peel back a little bit, you can see the flesh, the meat hanging down around it from the destroyed leg. Very cool. And something I must admit, I was afraid this would be a very fragile point on the figure. It feels really tough and really durable, which is great. The pants have great... Great leather looking texture to them, all the seams are there. 
the little fly his belt buckle which you can see goes all the way around the belt got his pockets on his terminator butt the jacket is a work of art it is full of little bullet holes and rips and tears it has a dusty color over top of a lot of it looking like he's been through war all the little hanging pieces from the belt around it to the zipper here to the zippers on the pockets little ties here up the side kind of corsetting it the little extra straps coming down beautifully done just little holes throughout and all the little holes have a little red paint around them looking like there's actually some blood coming through which is really nice very subtle detail you can see almost a slight gloss around them it's very hard to pick up but it's all there very well done amazingly well done here's the zippers on the sleeves too all kinds of rips and holes we peel open the jacket we can see his t-shirt his gray t-shirt with more holes and then a huge rip in the middle showing the chest of the endoskeleton and more meat work in there very very well done now hot toys i believe are all hand painted so everyone's going to be different mine i don't think has too much blood anywhere on it i know some people have complained that theirs it feels too bloody this one seems just fine to me there's a nice kind of darkening around the hole here it looks like the blood has seeped through a little bit there's obviously the little bullet holes no blood behind him which is a little bit of a bummer but a lot of great detail in here there's all the bullet holes up the neck some more on the side over here and this is head number one, the less battle damaged head. You can see as the holes on the side ripping through to the endoskeleton, a little bit of hair missing. But the Arnold likeness is superb. This looks just like the man. People debated whether this looked a little too young, or a little too old, whatever. I don't remember which one they were going with. I think it was too young. I don't see that. I see this being pure Arnold Schwarzenegger here. It looks just like the man. It's crazy. See, there's little lines coming up around his eyes here. Just a little speckling detail on his face, the five o'clock shadow going on. Just amazing attention to detail on Hot Toys' part. We come around the back looking at his hair. You can see there is a bit of a seam here, but that is actually a removable piece with a magnet. And that's where we have the PERS system, the parallel eye rolling system that Hot Toys has included with these DX figures. So you have a little joystick back here that can be manipulated to change Arnold's eyes. And they have that great gloss to them, which is really gives them this great life and you could have them looking whatever way you want so beyond just being able to pose this figure the articulated eyes adds a whole nother dimension to it that's just outstanding but that's just one look the governator has the head left arm and jacket are also interchangeable and just mid change here while the jacket is off i just wanted to point out how great this looks even without the jacket on the huge muscular arms they gave him even paint detail on these arms is great you could really display him like this and still have it look really good you can see the veins bulging out on his arms just an amazing sculpt i really really want to take off the shirt on this and see the detail underneath i just don't want to risk hurting anything but the temptation is very much there to see how far this detail goes on the figure but just had to point out how spectacular this looks without the jacket. It's not a cheap toy body underneath by any means. Now, according to Hot Toys instructions, you remove this arm while it's like this without the jackets on. You can see there's a nice big peg here at the elbow joint. And then you plug in the battle damaged arm here. And here we have the full on battle damaged T-800. So this is after he's had his head smashed in by the T-1000, after he had his arm shoved into the big gear and ripped apart. Just the most battle damaged he could possibly be in the film. And I think it came out really well. We take a look here at the stump. We have the little wires and tubes coming out. They're all very bloody. The only place on this figure that I feel may be a little overly done with the blood. They're just basically almost like a red chrome. They're not even silver. So it's that's a little less than I wanted it to be, or I guess more than I wanted it to be. But you can see the bloody stump up here where it came out of. I really feel a little weird putting this arm on. There's no real good way to do it. Hot Toys tells you to put it on, then put the jacket over it. But of course, all these things have the ability to go through all these little holes in the sleeve that's ripped up. So you have to be very careful with it. And going the other way around is just as dangerous. Arnold's jacket here is very very similar. It has a little more of that dusty color to it. I think that's more of just a variance in the hand painting here than it is actually of anything intentional, but it looks just as good as the last one. All the same details in there and nice to see, easy to see. And here we go with the fully battle damaged head. This thing
thing is so cool, is so well detailed. All the detail we had in the last one, plus the great mechanical side to it. Endoskeleton eye, the torn up flesh up by his head, kind of pulling back his hair. Some little cuts up on the ear there, and even some scratches on his face. This definitely looks like he needs a vacation. Here on the back of the head, we have exposed. You can see the little bit of endo head in here. And then of course we could pull the back of this off. Now we don't quite get the purrs system on this one. We have a little socket in there. And with that, we could pull up our drumstick and that will insert right back in there. And it will move just the one eye. Basically the same idea you get with the purrs system, just limited to one eye. Makes sense because the other eye has a light up feature, really cool light up feature making it glow red. A very bright LED in there. Just looks great. And I really thought when I got this, the articulation would be fairly similar to Red Skull because he's a great figure, but he's not too articulated. With that jacket on especially, he loses a lot of mobility. But this body is insane in the amount of articulation you can get. The head will swivel side to side on a ball joint, also go up and down, and it will tilt. Now it recommends moving your side to side first, then doing the up and down but a great range of mobility there. He also has a joint in the rubber part of his neck so that when you get to the extremes of the pose, it will actually bend a little there. It's kind of hard to see, but very nice feature. You can get some really good looks far up or far down with him. The shoulders are on a pin and socket. You can get a really good range there going very far forward, very far back. They're also on a hinge so they can move a little in and out, which is great. And of course, up to the side. Swivel out the upper bicep, double jointed at the elbow, which is super cool being able to reach very far across the body. We get the standard Hot Toys wrists where they will rotate as well as bend on an axis. So you can kind of rotate the axis around depending on where you want the hand to sit. Kind of confusing, but once you mess with it, it makes so much sense. Now the DX10 had a mid torso joint as well as a waist joint. Because we have the sculpted chest, we lose the mid torso joint, but we still have a great joint here at the waist. So you can go forward and back, you can twist, but you can get a good range of poses out of them. So you're not really lacking too much there. Here at the hips, you can go forward very well. You can go backwards, not quite so well. Out to the side a lot more than I thought he would. Swivel the upper leg. Now the knees are different. The undamaged knee will bend a lot with a double joint there. The damaged knee will only do 90 degrees just because of the sculpt. The foot articulation is even, once again, a step higher than Red Skull. Red Skull really didn't have much in the way down there. He is able to move forward and back, a little bit of a pivot, swivel side to side, and then a little bit of the ankle rocker in there, which is just amazing. I never thought I'd get that with the boots on. So I think overall, this is probably the coolest figure in my entire collection. I knew with a hot toy, it was gonna come with so much stuff and it was gonna be so cool, but until you see it in person, video reviews, pictures, nothing does it justice. Being able to move everything around on your own control, being able to mess with all the features, just really makes this thing so fun to own. And I know this is gonna be a figure that gets repositioned and reposed in my cabinet quite often because there's just so many cool ways to display him and pose him. The big downside of this, honestly, is that you have to buy two if you wanna display him in both modes. It's not like a lot of other hot toys where you could just buy the standard hot toy body that kind of fits the character and just put new clothes on it and make it its own thing. This has a specific sculpt to both the knee and the chest, and it's a very unique Arnold build muscle body. So it's something that you really do have to get two of if you want to have both scenes on display. All I can think of looking at the people online who have purchased two of these is, I know now why you bought two, but it is something I can never do. But absolutely recommend this thing, even with the few flaws I've found in it. I'm hoping Sideshow will take good care of me with the base. Hopefully that won't be too big of an issue to have fixed or replaced or whatever it has to be. But overall, this is just a phenomenal figure. The detail is great. I'm at a loss for words. I, all I can say is cool and awesome and everything like that so many times, but it's kind of lost its effectiveness. This is beyond cool. This is my second hot toy, the third hot toy in my household. And the other two were the MMS series, the basic series, and they're great. But moving up to the DX, I can understand why the DX costs the premium. 
because you get the premium stuff with this. You get everything. You get awesome accessories, tons of accessories, different looks, light up features, a great display base. Heck, mine basically came with a second figure. Granted, it's not highly articulated or anything like that, but it's a second figure. It's a second character. So this thing gets a mega super high recommend from me. I do believe this may very well be one of the ultimate items a Terminator fan could have in their collection. Outside of having like a life-size something or an actual prop from the film, this, as far as a mass-marketed item, is probably the best you could ever have because this is just so detailed, so amazing, and so versatile. I really think looking at the pictures people have posted of this guy alongside the previous released MMS T-1000, I think that one doesn't match up detail-wise anymore. I really think perhaps a DX T-1000 would be in order. It would work really well. They've kind of set the precedent for doing things like that. He could come with the motorcycle cop gear. You could switch out with him. He could come with all kinds of interchangeable accessories. Maybe you just do an end of the film version. Put him in the motorcycle pants with normal top with no helmet and just give him all kinds of stabbing arm weapons and things and bullet shot clip-ons and things like that. That could be amazing. That could be really cool, but I think a DX T-1000 is something that should happen, and I would most likely try to get my hands on one. The other thing I saw was with the new Iron Man series doing the power pose items. What a great idea for an endoskeleton. Give us a really basic one sixth endoskeleton that would pair well with these guys, but lacks the articulation of the full on version, which let's face it, is a fairly old figure at this point. They did recently redid it in quarter scale, but in six scale, it's been a long time since they produced an endoskeleton. That might be a cool way to put that back out there. Just saying, Hot Toys, you know, if you want to take my idea, you just, just send me a copy of the figure when you're done. And, you know, just, you don't even have to give me credit. Just, just, just a figure. That's all I want. That's all I really need. So make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. I'm probably going to be posting about 8 billion pictures of this guy. I've done about five photo shoots with him so far. I still want to take more pictures of him in different poses and different lighting and different setups. It's basically my addiction right now is photographing this figure in a myriad of different ways. So check out Outside the Box Reviews there, link below. Also check out Outside the Box Reviews on Instagram where I haven't been posting quite so many pictures of him, but probably will <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. And make sure you stay tuned because there's plenty more Outside the Box Reviews to come. If you have the means, I do recommend picking one up. Yeah, I'm quoting Ferris Bueller now. No, stop. If you collect it, you can find it at allscaleseverything.com.